My name is Ishul Abdul Halan, and welcome to my video on the introduction to the 68K microprocessor. This video is the second part from a six-part series that aims to give you introductory knowledge about this topic. Here we will discuss the programming model of the 68K microprocessor, focusing on the structure of the registers from a programmer's point of view. Hopefully at the end of the series, you would have gained an understanding on what the 68K microprocessor is, how it works and how it is programmed. This picture shows the register structure of the 68K microprocessor. It shows all of the register's name and size available for programming purposes, and is often referred to as the 68K microprocessor's programming model. In general, the purpose of these registers are as a place to work on data and addresses. For example, if two numbers are to be added together, they will be added in one of these registers. Registers are also used as an indicator to signal the state of the microprocessor after execution of an instruction. Let us now examine each register in greater detail. The first block of registers are the data registers. There are 8 data registers available and their names are D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. They are used as a temporary location to store data. They are also used as a workbench to work on data, for example, a logic instruction performed on two data sets would be done in the data registers. The numbers at the top shows its size. Each data register can be used as either an 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit register, depending on the data size to be put in them. Below the data registers, we have the address registers. There are 8 address registers, which are address register A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, and A7. They all are used to temporarily store memory locations. Note that address registers A7 are reserved to be used as either a user stack pointer, or as a supervisor stack pointer. Stack pointers are used to point at the address of the stack. In general, stacks are locations in memory reserved by the programmer to temporarily store data. This is done in the case that the data registers are all already in use. We will study more on stack operations in a different video series. The size of each address register may be either 16 bits or 32 bits only. A program counter is also available as one of the registers in the programming model, it is 24 bits in size. Its main purpose is to keep track and point to the address of instructions in memory that are to be executed by the 68K microprocessor during the fetch execute cycle, we will have a look at the fetch execute cycle in part 5 of this video series. Finally, we have a status register. It is also known as the condition code register or the flag register. Its size is 16 bits, the purpose of the status register is to alert the microprocessor on its state after execution of each instruction. The conditions of the status register is also of interest to the programmer, thus, we will have a closer look at the status register next. Here are the details of each bit in our status register. As mentioned earlier, the status register's size is 16 bits wide. It is divided into two 8-bit portions, bits 0 to 7 are the user byte, while bits 8 to 15 is the system byte. Let us now learn the names of each bit in the status register starting from the most significant bit, bit 15. Bit 15 is called the trace bit. When it is set to 1 by a programmer, the programmer has the ability to trace his or her program execution one line at a time for debugging purposes. Debugging is the activity of finding errors in a program. In order to set this bit to 1, you would have to be in the supervisor mode of the 68K microprocessor. Bit 13 is the supervisor state bit, by default, it is set to 0, such that you may use the 68K microprocessor as a normal user. You also have the option to program this bit to 1. Doing so will allow you to use the microprocessor in the supervisor mode. In the supervisor mode you would have more options for programming the 68K microprocessor, such as executing program tracing, as mentioned earlier. Bits 8, 9, and 10 are the interrupt mask bits, 
they indicate the status of the 68K microprocessor's interrupt pins, a detailed explanation of interrupt is reserved for a later video. That concludes the bits in the system byte. Let us now move on to the bits in the user byte. We will begin at the least significant bit. Bit 0 is the carry bit or carry flag. Its value changes to 1 when an arithmetic operation results in a carry out of the MSB or, if an arithmetic operation requires a borrow into the MSB of the operand. Operand is just another word for data. Bit 1 is overflow flag, its value changes to 1 when an arithmetic operation results in an overflow. An overflow is defined as a number value that is out of the range from the numbers that can be represented by a certain number of bit format of assigned number, are you confused? It is okay. We will discuss this topic in part 3 of this video series. Bit 2 is the zero flag, its value changes to 1 when an arithmetic or logic instruction results is zero. Bit 3 is the negative flag, its value changes to 1 when an arithmetic operation results in a negative value. Finally, bit 4 is the extend flag, its state changes with conditions that are similar to the carry flag. I hope you have written my explanation on all of these registers. If not, the two last slides in this video summarizes all of the registers in the 68K microprocessor for your convenience. This is a summary on all of the registers of the 68K microprocessor. I hope that you will write them all down for your future reference. This is all I have for you with regards to the registers of the 68K microprocessor, by now, you should have already known the numbers of registers available, its size and its purpose. In the next part of this video series, I would explain on how the carry flag and overflow flag changes state, there will be examples for you, so, please tune into part 3 of this video series on the introduction to the 68K microprocessor, thank you. Have a splendid day.